the Agora, the student newspaper at the college, is the sponsor of this event. I would like to uh, start by introducing to you the uh, young woman who will be the mistress of ceremonies tonight. Her name is Marissa Besti, and I think it's appropriate to let you know that on Saturday, she was named the Student Journalist of the Year for Community Colleges in the State of Michigan. So let's give the place to her. to see something different, to see something new. 
But hopefully that's part of your fabric as a human being, that you want to go out there and to do that. So to answer the question, I don't believe that. I don't. I don't think that it's a disadvantage. I mean, I can see where, again, you might have a limited scope, but that can be overcome. And again, if you have that drive to do something else, to do something more, you can do it, regardless of your location. But again, maybe I'm not the one to you know, necessarily make that statement, because I didn't grow up in the Midwest, so. <laughs> but from my observation, that's what I would say. I would say, no, it's not necessary. One of the constants in the lives of Ruth McBride's children was faith. She was raised an Orthodox Jew and converted to Christianity when she married a Baptist preacher. How do you think that marriage of two faiths affected her parenting style? Well, um, I thought she was eccentric, uh, but but focused, eccentric but focused, and her single focus was on getting the best education for her children. Um, in reading the book, with her growing up, she didn't seem to have a faith. Uh, her, her father was a strong semi-rabbi, but she didn't seem to embrace the Jewish faith. She just was going through the promotion. But at her weakest point, she met a Baptist preacher who, who I think, you know, she even said that she started living when she met the Baptist preacher. So I, I thought that he was uh, instrumental in, in developing her faith in God. And from that point on, she just talked about God. From the time she met that Baptist preacher, whenever something came up, she just said, God's going to take care of it. And so I thought that she had a very, very strong faith. And that's what saw her through. And it was rewarded. Every time she was at a critical juncture, somebody in her life helped her every step of the way. And I thought it reinforced her faith. And she kept saying, you know, God is going to take care of me. And even the Baptist preacher told her, if something happens to me, don't worry about it. God is going to take care of me. And he did. She met another good man, and he saw her on through. And then uh, her children, you know, picked her up. So I thought that the, the critical point was when she met the Baptist preacher, that he helped her to develop a strong faith. Do you think it was naive of Ruth McBride to think that her love for her family and her faith in God would overcome all potential obstacles, or did you find your faith in God's love and guidance inspiring? I frankly found it inspiring. Um, I mean, you can say it's naive, but bottom line, she did it. <laughs> her children grew up, they loved her, um, they were around her at, you know, at her deathbed. It's just that she didn't do it in such a way, I guess it doesn't follow the pattern that we would say is ideal. But the fact of the matter is she loved her children, she raised them up to be um, successful, maybe, you know, we all have some schisms and issues in life. But I don't think it's naive to believe in um, things that other people may think are impossible. That's the kind of household I grew up in. My mother was just an impossibility thinker. You know, I was sharing today, as I share with my students about believe, believing in possibilities, uh, you know, they gave her seven days to live, and she said, I don't know, you don't know what you're telling me. Well, she checked herself out of the hospital, found her own solutions to live 16 years more. I mean, we did that all the time. You know, growing up in Harlem, my, my dad, he didn't have, you know, he, he'll share a minute. Many times he had to drink water uh, or have mayonnaise sandwiches or whatever because they didn't have enough. And there were six of them, but they made it. They were successful, very close in the family, always close, uh, you know, a lot of joy and laughter. And I think we have to value joy and say that, uh, you know, sometimes we have that perfect family as far as numbers, but where's the happiness? So I say faith is faith. Faith takes you to that place that's impossible, doesn't make sense, but if it works, then. That's